Iron farms have always been a staple of every world, going back as far as version 1.2.1 1 in 2012 when iron golems were first added to the game, where one iron golem would spawn per 16 villagers provided they had doors and a roof above their head. I'm not actually too familiar with how these mechanics worked back then, as little 10 year old Skeege at the time could barely put together a cobblestone box, but soon enough, designs like Tango Tech's Iron Titan cropped up, making large scale iron farming much easier and accessible to a lot more players. Fast forward to the 1.14 village and pillage update in 2019, where villagers were overhauled, changing how iron farms worked as well. This allowed to much more efficient designs like the ones by Ilmango, Nembom, Raiseworks, and much more of the technical Minecraft community. These farms made thousands of ingots per hour, pushing the game to its limits to get the absolute maximum out of these farms. This is where Create comes in. With the ability to generate iron without a single villager, by washing gravel into iron nuggets. It's, it's the obvious choice. My final design only uses 5,656 SU compared to the first iteration, which used an enormous 21K. I always kind of forget to optimize my builds because it's so easy to just slap everything on maximum speed and call it a day. Um, but I went through great effort to make this as low as I physically could. Because I imagine this is probably a farm that you want to be building at the start of your world, where generating large amounts of power may not be so easy. The build itself is split into three sections. The cobblestone generator, the millstone to turn it into gravel, and then a washer to turn that into flint and iron nuggets. The flint is automatically trashed, and the iron nuggets are sent out to presses, where they are turned into ingots and sent to storage. And lastly... The material list. So pause here, collect all these things together, and we can get started on the tutorial. Right, so with everything collected, it's time to get started. So the actual measurements of this thing don't really matter because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start with the barrel at the front. Now you can see on the design, the storage barrel is right here at the front. So as long as you know where you want this to go, we can build the rest from here. So to start, we're going to have two belts uh, with one shaft on either side, and these are going to be five blocks wide. And then we're going to have two directly behind those, which are three blocks wide. Then from the back here, we're going to take our vaults and we're going to make them into a three by three. It's important that you face them this way, because if you do them horizontally like this, then they won't turn into the three by three. And we need that to be able to access the items from all the various points. Then from here, we're going to take two basins on the far side of the inner belt and place in our two presses, but making sure that the shaft is pointing towards each other like this. You can see on the final design, this is because we're going to hook up some cogs to this area. So it's important that these are facing the right way. You can always rotate them with a wrench later, but just try and do it now. It makes it easier later. Next up, we're going to do some funnels. So we're going to take two funnels on those basins, two on the barrel, and then two brass ones on either side of the vault here with a filter for iron nuggets. And that's the compacting pressing system pretty much done. We're just going to hook up the cogs later on, but that's fine. We can do that later. So first up, we're going to place in our two fans. They're probably going to connect to this belt here, but if you just grab your wrench and spin them so that they're facing inwards like this, two mangrove roots that are waterlogged. And this actually works as a blowing thing. I really like doing this because it just compacts it so much. Then from here, we're going to hold shift and place in our brass funnel so it's on input mode. And this is going to have a filter that I haven't set up yet. Nice. <laughs> it's going to have a filter for gravel, but on the deny list. So both the flint and the iron nuggets will be entering this vault. So to deal with the flint, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a ton of trap doors on all sides of here. And then one more in the middle like this. Two lava buckets, two brass funnels, both of the flint filter. There's actually no need to do two of these. You can really only do one, but I just like the symmetry that the way this looks. It just looks so nice. And then from here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to run the belts first for the cobble generator because that will make it easier to hook up all the other components. So we're going to take a bunch of rods like this, four blocks back, and then we're just going to add conveyor belts on top of all of these. So when you're done, it should look like this. Uh, the reason we've done this is because we're going to use these belts to power everything at the front. So we're going to take two cogs on here and we're going to hook these up to both of these belts. Now it's important to note not to put a shaft in this 
conveyor here, because otherwise that will break the th whole thing. So essentially what we want to happen here is this is going to reverse the direction of these belts. So this one pulls and that one pushes. And then of course you just want to repeat this on the other side. Now, just to be even more confusing, we're going to add shafts to the middle conveyor on the closest one to the front here, like this. And then we're going to add two rotational speed controllers on top of here, like this. Now, this is what I was talking about when I optimized the design here, is these are here, so this will go all the way down to an RPM of 1. So these will function at basically the slowest speed they can, but they don't need to run any quicker. So then we're going to set both of these rotational speed controllers to a speed of 1 because it's actually kind of interesting that a encased fan, for example, doesn't need uh, more rotational speed to go faster. The only thing that changes is the distance. So these can run at 1 RPM and still work at the same speed as a fan with 256 RPM. And it costs like 4 SU to run this. It's ridiculous. And you may be wondering, like, these are going so slow. But it takes a good amount of time to build up enough nuggets for these ingots anyway. So it's more than fast enough, and it saves on massively on SU. Speaking of these machines, the way we're going to hook these up is we're going to have one cog coming down from this big one, one going up, and then one big cog into the press like this. And of course, you just want to repeat this on the other side. Okay, so once, you've, once you're here, your presses, your fans and the front area is all hooked up. We're gonna take a shaft straight down the middle through here, through all of these belts. And at the end, it's gonna stick out one at the back. And this is where we're gonna do the main input for this entire thing. So this will be where you connect the shaft to the power to get this thing running. And we're gonna do that with two gearboxes on either side and another rotational speed controller. And we're gonna set this one to 128. Now, I'm going to be honest, you could just attach a shaft to here and call it good. But what I like to do here is I'm just going to add a clutch because this is like a redstone controlled lever for this, I guess. So it means that if you want to turn this thing off, all you need to do is just power this with like a redstone link or a lever or just a plain old redstone wire. And you can turn this thing on and off that way. But with the creative motor attached, you can see everything is now spinning. These are all spinning towards the middle. That's going towards there. And, oh, I made a mistake here, actually. So this is a very good chance for me to show a little mistake I made. So we want to set this one actually to minus one because you can see then the particles are blowing both ways. So yeah, the one on the left here, minus one. The one on the right, one. Negative, positive. Negative. So now we've got the layout. We need to start adding the cobblestone generators and the gravel generator part. So we're going to do the gravel first. And we're going to add a vertical gearbox on either side of these gearboxes with one cog on each. And then four millstones. And it's actually kind of nice that these power each other through it, each other. Like, so this will just power all the way down to the end here. And then to take the items in and out of these, we're going to just put andesite funnels on both sides. So now this is pretty much everything ready. All we need to add now is the cobblestone generators. And to do that, we're going to start with a rotational speed controller, a large cogwheel, and then five encased chain drives all the way to the end, and then four mechanical drills on each part here. And with a quick double check, we're going to set the speed of these to 48. Of course, this is on both sides, as expected. But of course, we're not done quite just yet because we need to add the water and the lava for this. But they do just need a little bit more prep work. So what we're going to do is we're going to come on top of these drills here. And we're going to add four trapdoors. And then the same on these funnels here. And you can see we've created a one wide space here. Then on the back, we're going to go one, two, three. Bam, bam. Get rid of that bottom one. And you can see we've created like a little channel for them. Of course, the same on top of these two cogs. And then mirror it to the other side. I'm actually really interested by this because you can actually waterlog drills. Oh, I'm. Uh, uh, oh, well. Yeah, this would be a good time to mention uh, on this side you also need a trapdoor on the drills so it doesn't um, spill out everywhere. So you get your waterlog drills, lava on top. 
And then voila, you're now making iron. Now, an interesting little thing I just feel like I should mention is that there is going to be items on the ground when you turn this farm off because what we're actually doing here is these gravels are just sitting on the ground as an entity while they wash because what's happening is we are able then to process gravel as fast as the belt can handle rather than as fast as it can wash, which is significantly faster. However, obviously, this being a continuous thing, there's only going to be a certain amount of gravel on the ground at a time. I mean, you know, there's only five or six here, which is not going to be the end of the world, and it's not going to crash your game in any way. And then another, another final note is that if you're using a schematic for this, it actually doesn't keep waterlogged blocks. It will keep the, the liquids and stuff just fine, but the waterlogged stuff does not render in a schematic. So you will have to manually put the water buckets in if you're building this via schematic cannon. And, you know, it's one thing to say is that these create iron farms aren't really designed to be a replacement for vanilla iron farms. I think if you need an absolutely insane amount of iron, a vanilla iron farm will always be better still. I just think that you can't really compete with the rates of golem spawning. However, one of these farms is something that you could build in your base. It's relatively lag friendly and it will just constantly trickle feed you a good amount of iron. I have a smaller one of these, maybe even half the size on the SMP server with some friends. And honestly, it provides me with more iron than it ever needs. So something like this will surely provide all your iron needs for a long time. I mean, hey, if you need more, just build another one. It's not that big. It's not that difficult. Maybe just even extend this section. Because, you know, you don't have to worry about how fast you're processing the gravel. All you need to know is, is it being cleared out of the millstones fast enough? And you know, whack this up to 256, so this belt's going even faster. Do what you want with it. But either way, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I really hope you guys found this one uh, enjoyable. I'm actually really proud of this design. I put a lot, a lot of effort into making this survival friendly, and I really hope that you do big things with it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Also, thanks a lot for a thousand subscribers. I'm now eligible for the YouTube Partner Program, and I'm really excited. Ah!